Hi Floss Tube, welcome back. I'm Erin, the Two Martini Stitcher, both here on Floss Tube, on YouTube. We call it Floss Tube for all of us that talk about cross stitch. This is my channel about cross stitch. I'm also on Instagram as Two Martini Stitcher, so you can find me there. And I try to post pretty regularly um, my cross stitch pro progress. Uh, but this is a channel about mostly cross stitch. Uh, I've gotten into knitting recently, so there's a little tiny bit of knitting. Um, Floss Tube is kind of the little corner of YouTube for those of us who are into the fiber arts. So on Floss Tube, you'll a lot of times see cross stitch or embroidery, um, sometimes quilting, sometimes knitting, a little bit of diamond painting too. <laughs> because a lot of cross stitchers also diamond paint. Here on my channel, it's mostly all cross stitch and a tiny, tiny little bit of knitting. So uh, it is sun, no, it's not Sunday. See, I'm still messed up. It is actually Monday. It's Labor Day here in the US. It is the 7th, looking at my, ca uh, my calendar. Um, it's the 7th and it's Monday. I typically record on Sundays. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. And you guys are probably realizing that it's a day later. This long weekend threw me all off. <laughs> I think uh, everybody having today off made me feel like today was Sunday. And so I just flat out forgot to record yesterday because it felt like Saturday all day yesterday. Uh, hope you guys have all had a great week. It felt like both the shortest week this past week and the longest week this past week in our house. Uh, our youngest started back to school. She's a freshman in high school this year. My baby's a freshman in high school. I don't know how that's possible. Uh, she, our, our school district is all um, remote learning. We're starting off remote and it seems to be going just fine, just great. So she's getting used to um, having, you know, the seven classes and how their block schedule rotation works. She seems to like all of her teachers and is currently doing the little bit of homework that she has. So sounds like that's all getting off to a good start. And um, they had the week off from dance. This is like the one week a year we have like a little, like a two week break right at the end of the year around Christmas. And um, this one week in, at the end of August, beginning of September, right before the fall session starts. So the girls are back to dance classes this coming week. And uh, yeah, so it was just kind of, kind of busy. And then a holiday weekend, we've been kind of just doing some fun family things not yesterday, yesterday, Saturday. Uh, my husband has decided to, okay, this all started because my youngest, we're gonna go on a little tangent, this happens on this channel. My youngest got into her head that she wanted to play some tennis. She just decided that she would be really good at tennis. My in-laws play a lot of tennis, and so my husband therefore plays some tennis. Not regularly, but he has. So they went out, and played some tennis like we happen to have a couple rackets and uh she's not fantastic at tennis but kind of likes it a little bit but then in talking to my in-laws they were like oh you should play pickleball never heard of pickleball pickleball is a thing apparently it's a very fast growing sport it seems to be a cross between ping pong racquetball and tennis sort of so my husband bought some pickleball rackets and he and the two of the girls, the two girls who are living at home right now, have been out playing some pickleball and they got me out there and taught me to play pickleball on Saturday. So we were playing some doubles, me and the husband against the two girls and we crushed them. The girls were a little unnerved. They're like, hey, you're kind of decent at this. I'm like, well, you know, I've played a little tennis and I've played a little ping pong. We're all terrible. Don't get me wrong. And I did, in fact, dive for a ball and like bust it on my face. <laughs> but so that was pretty fun. Um, other than that, we've just been kind of chilling out around home. 
no big plans because we should all be still in the U.S. hanging out with our family that we live with unless we are masked up and socially distanced. It's still really nice here in the Seattle area. It's like crazy. It's going to be like 90 the next couple days. It's never this warm in September, but we'll take it. And uh, yeah, so it was a good week. I hope you guys have had a good week. Um, let's talk about what I worked on this past week. Stitching wise, I did have one finish and a bunch of whips that I worked on, a bunch of works in progress. Um, and so we'll just, we'll just go through what I worked on. Oh, first, this is for Robin, uh, Lady Robin. She always likes to be able to see what your shirt says. So I'm going to back up again a little bit. And this shirt actually is part of haul. It's new this week. Kind of relates to stitching because I was completely enabled by another stitcher, Park Hopper Bart. So if you guys are not watching Park Harper Bart, you need to watch him. I will link him below. He does floss tubes with his wife, Katie. They are just the loveliest couple. So funny, lots of great stitching, and they are big Disney fans. I am also a very big Disney fan. And so Bart so helpfully messaged me this shirt on Instagram when it went on to pre-order and said, I think you need this. So here, I'll stand up. See, it says, love is an open door. And you guys recognize the frame? It is, in fact, a Friends Frozen crossover. And he was right. I needed it. My girls did not find it nearly as amusing as I did. Love is an open door, and it's the Friends door. So that came this week. Thank you, Bart. You'll see some other things that he enabled me to buy. Um, Hopefully it can go the other way. All right, but I thought this would be the perfect thing to wear today because I wanted to show you guys my finish. Look, I finished my bandana. I have not, I didn't have any cross stitching finishes this week, but I had my knitting finish of my very first knitting project and it fits just great. And there we go. What do you guys think? Doesn't it look so good? And you can hardly tell any of the wonkiness. I am so pleased with it. I'm gonna wear it while I do some text banking this week. And I just think it looks great. I'm gonna wear it the whole, I'm gonna wear it the whole rest of the time. Because I think it just looks fantastic. I love it. It's a little big to wear as a hair bandana. Um, but it works perfectly as a little like drapey neck bandana. I think it looks fantastic and I'm very pleased with how it came out. So for all of you that gave me suggestions on what my next knitting project should be, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have now started a Ravelry account. I'm still not sure I'm totally clear on what all Ravelry is, um, but I definitely have been favoriting some projects and quite a few people said I, I had already ordered yarn. So that's the thing. I had already ordered some fingering weight yarn and I, hopefully that'll be here soon and you can see it. So I was looking for patterns that used fingering weight and so many people said that my next project should be the Hitchhiker scarf. And I know Annie Joyfield Stitcher is stitching that right now and she says it's a great, easy next project. Um, I know Michelle Garrett has stitched it so I did break down and buy the book. There's a book, an ebook, of four different hitchhiker patterns and um, there are different like variations on it. So I think one of those will definitely be my next project. I have ordered needles and a swift and ball winder so I don't get myself in another kitten tangle. But apparently I'm going to be a knitter now because I broke down and bought the swift and ball winder here we go. Here we go. All right. But what did I cross stitch this week? That was the question. So last Sunday was still August. <laughs> it was still August last Sunday, even though we're now fully in the swing of all things September. 
last Sunday was still August and I was doing my last couple days of arbitrary August. And where's the front? Oh, here it is. My spin for Sunday, last Sunday was Whip It Good. I'm gonna have to put you guys on hold just a moment. Okay, I'm back. I saw that my daughter who's at work was texting me and we have had one incident where she cut herself kind of seriously at work and had to go to the ER for some stitches. So just wanted to make sure it wasn't anything like that. Okay, last Sunday I spun Whip It Good. And I will put a picture in of where it was when I started last Sunday here. And make sure I got this the right way up. Here is where I got to. Um, Sunday was really, really busy. Um, so I didn't get a lot of stitching time, but I did get some in. I got these, sti these scissors, this little flower, and this branch all in. I am stitching this on an 18 count Ada in maroon by Be Stitch Me. And I'm stitching it with one strand of sulky white. So it's the like 12 weight. I don't know what the number is. I think it might be 1001. But it's the sulky bright white. So there's where I got to. I love this pattern. And this, um, I bought this pattern when it was a fundraiser last December, but Beth has released this as a PDF on her website. So you can get this now as a PDF, whip it good. Fantastic pattern. So fun to stitch. All right, so that was Sunday. And then Monday was the very last day of Mania. And I spun You're Okay by Bendy Stitchy. Um, I am, I lost my train of thought. I was gonna say something. Okay, I stitched on this on Monday. I will put a picture of where I was when I started here. And then this is where I got to. Um, I feel like I must not have had that much time on that Monday either. I don't know, it's been a busy week, guys. I'm telling you, it's been a really busy week. But I did get some more of the stems and leaves in here. I'm stitching this on an 18 count Ada in uh, either Country Mocha or Vintage Country Mocha, but it's one of the ones that's printed. So the, the, like modeling is printed on one side. Uh, and I am stitching this, I think in almost all called for. I feel like I swapped out the yellow maybe. No, Queen Bee. I don't know. I think I'm stitching this in all called for colors. Uh, I am using Anchor Black instead of 310, but there's the colors. And I love this chart. When I started this, this was a mania start. I started this in mania. And at the time I was thinking I was gonna, I wasn't gonna do the you're okay, I guess, even though I love that. Like I love the snarkiness of it. Um, I was thinking I was just gonna leave it off and put this up here, maybe put my initials down here. But I am feeling more and more like I'm gonna stitch the you're okay and leave the I guess off and just have it be a reminder to me that you're okay. You're doing okay. <laughs> Things feel a little chaotic and stressful right now. And I think depending on when I finish this up, I might need the reminder, you're okay. Everything's going to be okay. We're all fine here. <laughs> so, but for right now, I'm going to work on the birds and the heart and I'll decide on the words and such later. Um, I do love me some snark. So, all right, so that was it for the end of Arbitrary August. Those were my last two Arbitrary August spins. And then Tuesday began September and start September and sampler September and Sal September. Um, and the first thing up was the new start. Tree of Magic. I printed this. This is a picture off of um, Nitka Moscow's Instagram. 
of like, it's almost, it's a better fuller picture of what the Tree of Magic looks like. So this is a Barbara Anna kit that you can only get through Nitka Moscow and that'll all be linked below. Um, fantastic kit, well worth the price and the way to, um, to get it from Russia. And I started this on the first with, um, as a stitch along start along with Amy Baruch, Joy Phil Stitcher, and whoever else had the kit and wanted to join us. And I know there are several people that have started or are waiting on their kit and they're gonna start. So the hashtag is hashtag tree of magic sal. So this was my start for the 1st of September and I'm using all everything that came in the kit. So it came with a 32 count linen. I think it looks like flax to me. It's either flax or platinum. And then it came with this beautiful card with all the DMC colors. And this is my start. Um, I just love it. This is an addictive little stitch. There's not a ton of back stitch. There is a little bit. Like this is a little um, kind of twig with buds on it. Because I stitch in hand and I end up like kind of rolling up, I don't want the back stitch to get caught on anything. So I think I'm going to leave this back stitch to the end because I'm going to be stitching this in hand. So there was a little bit of back stitch, but I got the essentially the whole first little tier done. Um, you know, they get wider and wider, so that's not going to keep happening. But oh my gosh, this is fun with all these little motifs to stitch. So fun. So then I came down and got started on the next level. Uh, the needle minder is from Abby Topknot, and I just thought, yeah. Tree of Magic needs a panda in a suit smoking a pipe. Because you would see that in a tree. In my Tree of Magic, you would definitely see a panda in a suit smoking a pipe. So that's from Abby Topknot. She has like a whole series of these like fancy animals in suits that are like, they're like little guitar pick shapes. I love them. Uh, yeah, so that's Tree of Magic. Fantastic stitch. If you have it, Join us, give it a start. Um, yeah, and definitely follow, I know Amy got like this whole shelf here done, and this, these flowers and this mushroom. Mm. All of Barbara Anna's stuff is just, I just love her like whimsical, colorful style. It's just, it's all so good. Okay, so that was the 1st of September, and then on the 2nd, I spin my wheel that has all my samplers on it for Sampler September to see what would come out first, and um, get the first, the first round. So each sampler that I spin will get three days of work, and the first one that got spun was Emily's House by Lindy Stitches. And I was finally, I was really glad that this got spun because I was finally feeling ready to address this again because when it got put away, it got put away after the border had not met up. So I had stitched the whole border and then down here, it hadn't met up. It was off by a bit, by a fair bit. And so I found the mistake and the mistake was up here. So I ripped all of this out, restitched it, and it still didn't meet. And then I found one other small mistake up here, and then put it in timeout because <laughs> I just wasn't ready to do some more ripping out. So this is not going to look like a ton of progress, but the first day was spent frogging and getting that border to match, which I would love to say just took one more try like fourth times the charm on this, but here it finally is. Border matching up, all correct, yay! And then I did, this flower was only partially done. I did this flower, I did the, the bird, is that a crow, blackbird? And then I started the outline of the house. So I am so excited. It took a bit of work. Um, 
but I was so happy to do this and I did this on um, Wednesday and I got to finish up the border with my channel members. We had our first little Zoom Stitchy Meetup, which was so much fun. It was so fun. So I do have it set that you can join the channel. If you click, click the link in like the header, um, that says join, there'll be a little short video that kind of talks about what that looks like, um, what it, it means to join the channel, but some people have joined at a level that we meet up on Zoom and stitch a couple times a month, and it was so nice. It might be why it took me a couple extra tries <laughs> to get the border to meet up because we were busy chatting, and maybe I should have picked a project that I didn't have to count so much, but they also got to share my excitement. <laughs> So thrilled when this finally all met up. So there's Emily's house. It got three days of work, which feels like I didn't get a lot of progress for three days, but getting that border to meet and finally starting a little bit on that house made me very, very happy. So, oh, I should tell you about it. It's on 36 count Drapple Brown Linen by X2 Design with all of the called for um, Flosses. So there's some over dyed, there's some DMC called for. I had bought this as like the whole kit um, when there had been like a limited edition kit with a Mamalee bag and Emily of Emily's house made the bags and it came with the chart and the bag and all the over dyed flosses. So I am doing that in all the called for. And I love it. So first sampler of Sampler September. Check. All right, so after three days on Emily's house, I got to spin my uh, Sampler September wheel again. And it came up with my new start on the wheel, which was super exciting. And so I started like a cherry blossom on Friday this sampler. Love this sampler so much. Um, I had a bit, a moment of pause because I had chosen this like really pretty um, linen. It's a 36 count seashell by X2 Designs. And when I ironed it out to get started, I stitch in hand and so everything gets really crumpled and wrinkled and it gets folded in the project bag. But when I start, I do like to start with freshly ironed linen. It lasts like 10 minutes, but I do like to start that. I noticed that there is like this, do you guys see that? Kind of faded line in the middle. And there's actually another one down here. Can you, so you guys can kind of see where it was folded. Um, and it has been stored folded, but not, but in a closed cabinet, like on a shelf in a closed cabinet. So it hasn't been exposed to light. So I don't know why the linen did that and I was really kind of worried about it and I thought should I pick something else should I try to over dye this a little bit but in the end I decided that it's going to be that like kind of faded out part is going to be in the lower right quarter so it's not going to look like a line right through the middle like I'm not centering it so it's not going to look like a line right through the middle I'm hoping it's going to be okay because I've already put in quite a bit of stitching and this is where I got to. So, so you can see, I think it's going to end up being, it's going to come over here and down here. So, but there's that row of houses. So I think, I think it's going to be okay. And I really love this color for this sampler. So I really wanted to do it in this color. So I went ahead and this is where I got to. Now, as I'm stitching on the linen, it is, the color palette for this is really like kind of pale, because these are the main colors, right? Is this 951, all the cherry blossoms, which they show up just fine. And the middle of them, I think is this purple grape arbor is the middle of them. But can you see, like, this is like a line of border by the alphabet. It is really just delicate and pretty. 
which is not what I normally stitch. It's so pretty and I love it. Do you guys think it's too pale? It shows up better in real life than it's showing up on the camera, but it is really delicate and pretty. I'm just worried it's maybe a little too delicate. My other choice of fabric was um, Through the Stones by Be Stitch Me, which is darker, but it's more of a gray. And this is like a really pretty lilac. So I really like it. It's a fun stitch. It's a lot of these flowers though, not gonna lie. It's a lot of these flowers in the border, but because they're big blocks of color, they're easy to stitch. So I think it's gonna be really super pretty um, but let me know if you have strong opinions on if it's too all just too delicate and pretty. Like if it's all just too pale. I think it'll be really nice. But it did give me like, mm, as I was stitching up that border, I was like, that little band, I was like, oh, this is really all very, but it looks like that in the, in the sample too. So you can see it's this border, oh, getting a glare. It's this border here above that alphabet. So the whole thing is really like, even in the model, it is all really like, it's really sweet. It's really sweet and delicate. So, so I got three days on that and it's fun to stitch. It is a very fun to stitch. So, that's like a cherry blossom. The other thing I worked on just a tiny little bit, but I figured I'd show, is the next uh, part of the Enjoy the Sunshine Stitch Along from Tempting Tangles came out. And so I did put a tiny little bit of work into it. I don't have the part finished by any um, stretch of the imagination, but this is where I got to. So I put in this here and most of this little bird. And there's some more birds and there's kind of a sun motif um, we're working our way across the top. So it's square. So there's 16 parts. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we are working our way across the top. So it kind of goes in bands. So there we go. That's where I am. It's not done. Hopefully I'll get the rest of that part finished up this week. Because I really, I think with, with these smaller sections, I can stay on top of that. We'll see. Okay, and then the only other thing I worked on was full coverage project. So, this week was Farewell to Anger. So Farewell to Anger came back out. Um, this is um, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. I am doing just the regular, regular size, regular amount of colors. So it's not a mini, it's not a max color. This is just the regular size chart from Heaven and Earth. And I finished off the diagonal I was working on, which was my goal for the week. So I finished off the diagonal I was in which meant that I needed, when I, when I work on it again, I need to move, move the Q-snaps. So I went ahead and took it out of the Q-snap. So you can see, even though everything I stitched was in the Q-snap, I thought it might be fun for everybody to see how big of a piece this is. With finishing this diagonal, I hit 5%. So here it is. <laughs> here, here's the whole piece of fabric for Farewell to Anger, and this is the diagonal I was finishing. So I'm stitching this in 10 block diagonals. Um, these are all my parked threads over in the next diagonal. So there we go. I love this. I love stitching on this. It's so fun with all the colors. It is confetti heavy. I mean, you guys can see. it's. It's fairly confetti with all the different colors, but it's really fun and beautiful. So this will get a nice little break. This is the first time it's been out of the Q-snap since I started this. This was my new year new start on January 1st. 
So 5%. I did take a break on this. It didn't come out to play in all of June, July. It got one day in August. So that's really, I mean, it's not eight months worth of stitching. It's like five months worth of stitching. So I have been averaging about by or 1% a month when I'm working on it, when it's in the rotation consistently, which means it's gonna take me like a decade to finish, but it's fine. It's fine. We're all fine here. You're okay. Even if you have an unreasonable number of whips and big old projects, you're okay. <laughs> We're all in this together. All right, so that's everything that I stitched on this week, guys. Yay! Oh, oh, also, I'm hoping to still have this video up. It might be kind of late, but I'm hoping to still have it up on Monday. So it's middle of the day, so water. Tumblr is from my absolute favorite podcast, Pod Save America. It's not great, Dan. Okay, just water today. It's a little early for cocktail hour, even on a holiday. All right, so plans. So I, today's Monday, right? Today's Monday. Am I spinning the wheel for what sampler I'm doing? I think maybe I am. No, no, I have one more day on like a cherry blossom. I still have one more day on like a cherry blossom. Yay. I was like, what am I stitching today? I don't even know what I'm gonna stitch today when I have time to sit down. I still have one more day on like a cherry blossom. So I'll be able to get even, so that's just two days of work on that piece. That's good, maybe I'll start the letters. I like stitching letters. Okay, so like a cherry blossom today, as well as Harry Potter book covers. I put it back in the Q-snap this morning. It is ready to go. Harry Potter book covers is in the rotation for this week. And then tomorrow, I start Quaker Genetics with Frozen Crafter, yay! And any of you that have Quaker Genetics, I know quite a few people said that they also had the chart, and we're gonna start with us. I'm very excited. Tomorrow is Quaker Genetics start. The hashtag is 16 peas in a pod sow. So I'm super excited to start Quaker Genetics because hashtag I went to stitch all the ink circles. They're just, they're so good. Once you start stitching ink circles, you get a little addicted. And I'm so glad that Megan brought that one to my attention and because I had not seen Quaker Genetics. It's a genius chart. I'm very excited to start it. So Quaker Genetics, tomorrow, then Wednesday, I'll spin my next sampler. And I'll work on that on Wednesday and Thursday. Friday is Scatter Pumpkins. I'm starting Scatter Pumpkins. Saturday is the 12th, so I'll work on Crosses of the Kingdom. So the next sampler I spin is kind of weird because it'll get two days, and then I have a bunch of other projects I'm working on, and its third day doesn't come until next Monday. So I'll work on it Wednesday, Thursday, Monday because it's Scatter Pumpkin Start, Crosses of the Kingdom, Dark 13 Stitching, I'm starting Fancy Blacket. And then that third day on the next sampler will happen next Monday. So those are the plans for the week. I had looked at, I even wrote down what all of the um, kind of assignments were, what the challenges were for Enchanted Stitching. This month is Inside Out. I love that movie. And I had kind of thought, oh, well, I'll see what the challenges are. And if what I'm stitching fits, then it fits. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I pro could probably make them fit, but I think I might just do monthly challenges for Enchanted Stitching this month uh, because that'll, I think, just work better with my plans. I am doing crazy domino effect in semi-sane stitchers. So I started here, for those of you in semi-sane, I can tell you what I have done so far and how I've linked them. So with crazy domino effect, 
you are going from one whip to another and you have to link them up kind of like you do with dominoes. So my first one was Tree of Magic because that was the first and I'm doing the 100 stitch level. So each time you move to the next one, it's incrementally 100 more stitches and you have to link the project somehow. So first was Tree of Magic and then I moved to Farewell to Anger for 200 stitches in that there's trees in both of them. Tree of Magic, lots of trees and Farewell to Anger. Then I moved to Emily's house, because that's what I spun, for 300 stitches. And I linked that by anger, because it's Farewell to Anger, and the border on Emily's house had made me so angry I put it in timeout. <laughs> See, I, I mean, they might be tenuous, but I'm making it work. And then, Like a Cherry Blossom was spun, so that's number four. So 400 stitches in Like a Cherry Blossom, and I linked it because they both have flowery borders. <laughs> so now I need to figure out how to link Like a Cherry Blossom and um, Quaker Genetics and try to do 500 stitches in Quaker Genetics. I will. I'll do 500 stitches, even if I kind of like have to carry it a little bit um, past that one day. I'll do 500 stitches in Quaker Genetics. So let's think about this. How am I going to link that to like a cherry blossom? Okay. I've got it. <laughs> in like a cherry blossom, the verse talks about a garden and seeds, right? The verse is uh, your mind is a garden, your thoughts are the seeds, you can grow flowers or you can grow weeds. So garden and seeds are in the verse on Like a Cherry Blossom. Quaker Genetics is based on Mendel's experiments with pea pods, with peas, with wrinkly and smooth and yellow and green peas, with the traits of peas, which you grow in a garden. Boom. <laughs> Link them. I don't know if they're going to give me credit for these links, but I think they're creative and they should. Anyhow, okay, so Quaker Genetics will be next up on my semi-sane crazy domino effect. Other than that, I don't know that I'm really going to be doing much in the challenge groups this month. WIPGO. Oh, we should talk about WIPGO. Because the WIPGO numbers got spun, and I feel like, okay, for September... The number spun for WIPGO, which if you're not familiar, WIPGO, I will link it below, is the brainchild of Jesse Marie Does Stuff, genius. You put your whips that you choose into like a bingo board. I'll show you mine, although it's a mess now. And then each month she calls two numbers and you set the goals, you put your whips and what the goal is into the bingo board and then as you finish them, you can check them off and try to get bingos. So, this month is got called number 22, which is Harry Potter book covers for 8,000 stitches. So, I mean, I'm going to be working on Harry Potter book covers, so we're working on that. And then number 16, which is Holly and Hearts for a finish. Been really smart. I would have that on my sampler September wheel because that is a sampler oh well too <laughs> late <Wait> now <laughs> so I'm probably not going to be focusing on like other than working on Harry Potter book covers I'm probably not going to be focusing on Whipco stuff but I will next month next month I think is going to be kind of a catch things up finish things up pick a few focus pieces kind of month um, and I'll get back to WIPGO because I've done pretty good on WIPGO. What do I have so far that's been called and not completed? Um, I have two page finishes, 8,000 stitches on Harry Potter book covers. Um, they got called in August and September. I have done that many stitches this year, but when I started WIPGO, I thought I'm only going to count from when it's called. So I've had two like quote unquote page finishes on Harry Potter book covers this year, but 
that's fine. I now have until the end of the year now to get those 16,000 stitches and I should be able to do that. Um, also farewell to anger for 8,000 stitches. So I put in some so far that will, that'll happen. Um, Holly and Hearts now for a finish has been called. So I'll probably work on that actually next month. A Mill Hill seasonal magnet. I don't know why I put those on there. I think because I had the kits and I wanted to make sure I did them. Let's see if I had that, that might get, that might get ignored on my Webco board, not gonna lie. And then Game of Swans being halfway done. Game of Swans is on Sampler September. It won't get halfway done, but I'll get some work on it. So that's where Whipgo stands um, as far as all the challenge stuff that I do. Yeah. So that's it. That's it for plans. Oh, what did, what did I buy that came in this week? I did end, well, here. I'll show you what came in, and then we'll talk stitch from stash. How about that? So first off, not stitchy related, um, but also inspired by Park Harper Bart, so I figured I'd show them, is from the same company. So this t-shirt came from Once Upon a T-shirt, because when he sent me the like post about it and said, you need this. I was like, oh, I do need that. Pre-order, follow. And it's that follow that's gotten me into a little bit of trouble. But they're really, they have really, if you like Disney, they have really, really cute um, shirts and some of them are crossover, but they also have these adorable little bow bands. Look at these. And I thought since I'm wearing the hair curly now, it might be nice to have like, you know, for like when I'm on like second, third day hair, and I'm on second day hair today, like to be able to like pull it back and, you know, maybe wrangle the curls a little bit, but look how cute these are. And you can move the bows around um, on the band and they're super comfortable. The bands are super comfortable. I don't even re realize I'm wearing it. So this one is Star Wars, little doodle Star Wars. Look at that. Leia, uh, R2D2, C3PO's on here somewhere. Oh, there he is. Um, the one that I got didn't have, does it have a Yoda on the front? Oh yeah, there he is. It has one little, one little Yoda on the front, but look how cute that is. And then I got this one that I just thought would go with just about everything. And it's just little black doodle. I mean, maybe not, you know, Disney on Disney, but I thought if I'm just wearing like a plain back t-shirt, how cute would that be? And they're so comfortable and they have all different kinds. So I will link once upon a t-shirt. So this came in. Thank you, Bart. You've sent me down a rabbit hole. We all are here to enable each other is how it goes. Okay. And then on Monday, last Monday, I met... Robin, so it was the last day of August, and I met Robin of Lady Robins over at our local needle workshop, our LNS Thread Needle Street, just to browse a little bit and go get a coffee and chat. And I told myself I wasn't going to buy anything because I was still in the black. Well, so I lied. I went and I thought, well, I'll buy one thing. Like, I'm going to limit myself to one thing because I was in the black by like $3 and 80 some odd cents. So I did end August in the red a little bit, but then the very next day when I got my $25, cause I set my budget at $25, the absolute max I can, I'm now back in the black. So I looked, there were some patterns that definitely tempted me, but in the end I picked up this 32 count cobblestone linen. Um, because, and this is why, because I was looking at the fabric and I was like, oh, that's a nice color. And it said discontinued. So I was like, well, I better grab a piece, but I like that it's dark, but not super, super dark. Also, I was watching Jen Lee's fantastic new floss two video. That is a whip parade. Have you guys seen this? If not, I'll link it below. Go watch. 
so, so good. I'm always up for a whip parade, but this was a very special whip parade because Jen of Quirks and Stitches has decided that she is going to take, take the next, I think 18 months. I think she has 18 months maybe before her 40th birthday. She's a young, a youngin. And she is going to attempt to get to 40 whips or less by her 40th birthday. So she did a whip parade to show all of her projects. And I feel like she had something on this. I could be totally wrong, but it looked something like this. And I thought, oh, that's a good fabric that's dark, but not super, super, super dark. So I picked this up. Also of note, I was watching that video, her whip parade video. I started it late at night and I thought, oh, I'll just watch half of it. It's kind of long. She shows 96 whips, but I am here for the movie length whip parades. Uh, but then I just couldn't stop. So I stayed up and watched the whole thing. So it was a little late and I just got my wheels churning. I was like, that is such a good idea. I love that idea. And then I started thinking to myself, how long would I have to get down to 45 whips by my, my 45th birthday? Like what a fantastic idea, right? I thought about it. I was like, okay, what year is my 45th birthday? And guys, it took me a full minute at that hour to do the math and realize I am 45. <laughs> we'll just, you guys have a laugh, we'll let that sink in. So uh, scratch that, I've got some time, maybe we'll think about 50 by 50 in a couple years. But I'm all here to cheer on Jen. Okay, so that's what I bought at Threadneedle Street. Also got this week in the mail, um, my very first issue on my new subscription of Just Cross Stitch. You can tell there's some good stuff that I flagged. I did not a full flip through, but showed um, the ones that I thought were really great um, to the channel members last week. But I mean, there's clearly like one, two, three, like four things. I mean, this one alone, I think is so cute. And I feel like you could do it on a blue modeled fabric and not stitch all that blue background. Like, I think that's what I would do is not stitch that blue background. But I love this like wrought iron border here. Or even if you just stitch the ground and the pumpkins and the kitties and the little mouse, that alone would be super cute. So I like that uh, very much. Oh, also, I, I had a lot of things come in this week, also not stitch related, but purchased because of Bart and I, I was so excited to see these come in because I think we ordered them about the same time when Bart showed them and Michelle had already gotten hers, but I got these from Disc Girl Magic. Look how awesome that Tiana Black Lives Matter pin is. And she had stickers too. So I got a pin for me, a pin for Abby, and some stickers for Sarah and her friends. I love them. Um, so cool. And this one, look, this one, her like shirt is sparkly. I think I'm turning that one into a needle minder because it's sparkly. The other one, the shirt is not sparkly. I don't know what the difference is, but love those. Okay, what else is in here? I think I only have one more thing. Yes. And then the last thing that came in was my August color and cotton fabric of the month. So if you have not gotten your fabric of the month from color and cotton yet, and you don't want to be spoiled, look away for a little bit until you hear me quit talking about it. I had a 36 count uh, linen in their like neutral color way. And this one doesn't even have a name. It just says August 2020 Fabric Club Special Edition. And it is so good. Look at that. If that is not just the perfect creamy neutral, I just don't know what is. So there we go. And it's just, it's really lightly modeled. Love it. Love, love, love it. So that was... All the haul this week. 
And honestly, with all the starts and everything I've got going on this month, I think I'm going to be able to keep it in the black for Stitch from Stash. Although I get tempted on the daily. Michelle did a like live stitch with me yesterday and she started this Plum Street Grim Gourds that of course I was then on the phone looking to see where I could buy it. I refrained. So I'm starting to scatter like I don't need more fall charts. It has a cool penny red border. Mm. Okay, restraint. We're going to show some restraint. You don't have to. You shop all you want. I'm going to try to show some restraint. However, how about a giveaway? Stuff we don't have to buy, I'm just going to give away. All right, so last week the giveaway was for this 12 seasonal wreaths. Um, it's cute. There's one for every month. Oh, look at the daffodil for April. This is really cute. Um, of course, there's a poinsettia wreath for December. Um, so I asked you guys to tell me about your September plans. It was so fun reading all about your September plans. Um, everything everybody's got going on, even if it was just, I'm going to stitch what I want. Love it. Uh, the winner of this, so I used the random YouTube comment picker with the keyword September, and the winner is Linda Maynard. Linda, you won! I have your address because you filled out my Google form. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will get this in the mail to you. So, what is going to be the giveaway this week? First of all, rules for the giveaway. If you want to be entered for the giveaway, you have to fill out my Google form. It is linked at the very top of the description box. That way I don't have to chase anybody for an address. Uh, I ask that you be 18 so that you can give me your address <laughs> legally. And do not say giveaway or anything like that. Hang on a moment, guys. Sorry about that, interrupted right at the end. Someone was hollering for me. Where was I? Giveaway rules. <laughs> Fill out the Google form so you can give me your address. Be, or be 18 so you can give me your address. Don't say giveaway or prize or any of those things that kind of brings, that trolls kind of search for to find things to win because I'd like this to go to an actual stitcher. So, and if you, would be great if you would subscribe and like and all those good things too. I always forget to say those things. Okay, so what did I pick for this week's giveaway? It's September 7th. So September 11th is coming up and I have had this chart hanging around and I just thought it would be the perfect giveaway for this week. And that is Silver Creek Samplers Michael's Prayer. So um, it says on the front, or the sampler says, Lord, send me where you want me to go. Let me meet the folks you want me to know. Tell me the words you want me to say. Tenderly keep me out of your way. Um, and it has um, Michael Judge's name. So he was a Franciscan friar and a Catholic priest, and he was a chaplain um, for the New York City Fire Department. And on the... Uh, Chart notes, it says, while serving in that capacity, he was killed, becoming the first certified fatality of the September 11th attacks. So I figured since we're coming up on the anniversary, this would be the perfect time to give away this beautiful chart. It comes with a little charm. Um, I just think it's really, really pretty. I don't know. Oh, it has the date 9-11-01 in her dress. Um, if you didn't want to put that in there, I'm sure you could just stitch that band solid. But So if you would like to stitch this chart, if you would like a chance to win it, then just tell me you want to stitch the prayer. So I want to stitch the prayer, and you will be in the running for this chart that I will give away on next week's Floss Tube. So that's all I have, guys. Um, hope you are all having a good long weekend if you're here in the U.S. and that... Um, all of your back to school is going well, whether you have kiddos in the school or are a teacher, God bless all of our teachers. You guys, you guys are working so hard and I appreciate all of you, every single one of you. And I think that's all I've got for you guys this week. So I will see you all next Sunday because it won't be a long weekend. I'll remember it's Sunday and hopefully we'll have cross stitch happy hour. 
And until then, cheers.